So thank you very much uh, for joining us today. Um, it's actually a very special day. I hadn't realized, um, only realized this morning, that it's the appearance, the disappearance day of um, Haridash Thakur. So uh, we have a tradition where whenever it's an appearance or disappearance day um, of a great Vaishnava or the Lord, um, we, we talk about them, we get their blessings. And uh, Aridas Thakur is known as Namacharya. So very important to get his blessings because our sadhana is all based around um, chanting the holy names. So if we get that right, uh, then our spiritual life will be very successful. And he is Namacharya, he's in charge of uh, the holy names. So we want to seek his blessings. So before we do that, we can just chant this uh, verse from Chaitanya I was looking for, I was uh, forgetting the invocation verse, so I've decided to put it on instead. Jai Jai Shri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jai Dvaita Chanda Jaya Gauravata Vinda Jai Jai Shri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jai Dvaita Chanda Jaya Gauravata Vinda So, in the Chaitanya Charitamrita Antalila, uh, chapter 11, text 97, uh, describes this verse. Harida Sachilla Prithvira Shiromani Tatavina Tatna Sunya Haila Medini. Harida Shako was a crown jewel on the head of this world. Without him, this world is now bereft of its valuable jewel. This is uh, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself uh, quoting this, saying this verse, uh, together with a whole lot of other verses when um, Haridas left this planet, Haridas Chakor. So um, we've done a little bit of a presentation, so we can just uh, go through that. He's one of the most uh, dear, most uh, associates of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Um, and uh, he's famous for chanting three lakhs of holy name every day, 192 runs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, um, who is Haridas Thakur? He um, actually is an incarnation of uh, Lord Brahma and Prahlad Maharaj and somebody called Brahma Mahatapa, who's the son of Ruchika Rishi. So well, Lord Brahma, when he um, kidnapped the cowherd boys and calves, uh, he became somewhat um, proud and Krishna, of course, uh, reduced his pride to zilch. <laughs> and Lord Brahma prayed to Krishna that, please let me not get so proud again. And he prayed, um, yeah, he prayed to Lord Krishna in that way. And Lord Krishna said, okay, in Kali you, you can come, but you can be uh, born in a family of malechas, but you, can, you will be preaching the glories of the holy name. So this is uh, Haridas Thakur. He appeared in this world um, 35 years before uh, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in Bangladesh and was born in a Muslim family. Uh, how, uh, and he always considered himself uh, uh, extremely fallen and destitute. And especially he would uh, demonstrate this in Jagannath Puri by staying out of the way of the pujaris of Lord Jagannath. But of course, uh, as we will see later, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would come to him daily with prasadam. So although he wouldn't enter the temple, nor uh, go anywhere near the priests, the Lord himself, uh, Jagannath in the form of Chaitanya, would come to him every single day. And it took a while also that, he, uh, unless he finished his uh, chanting, he wouldn't eat, he wouldn't take any prasad. So um, from Bangladesh, he, he actually uh, went to another place in Bangladesh for a certain period of time. He was um, uh, addic addicted to chanting the holy names from pretty much the beginning of his life. At this place called Benapola, he constructed a cottage, he planted a tulsi uh, plant, and he would chant daily three lakhs of uh, holy name in front of tulsi. And he would chant all day and all night. And um, he would take Pushad, uh, he would go to a Brahmin's house and beg food. And he was very, very pure and everybody would worship him uh, as being so pure. This is a little example 
he, he was friendly with everyone, including the animals. And uh, there was one, the ruler of that district, Ramachandra Khan, he became envious of uh, Haridas Thakur. He himself uh, was um, not, well, he was an atheist, but the respect Haridas Thakur was getting, he did not like. So he was trying to find fault in Haridas Thakur. He couldn't find any fault. Then he went to some prostitutes and he um, asked them to devise a way uh, to distract Haridas Thakur from his tapasya, his uh, sadhana. And one of the prostitutes, a very attractive girl, told him, I will do so. I will take away his mind within three days. So then uh, Ramachandra said, I will uh, send a constable with you and will arrest you and him when you know he falls down. But she said, no, let me just go on my own and seduce him. And then the second day, he can, yeah, the constable can come. So the first night she arrived there, she was, uh, she exposed herself, she was very beautiful. And she spoke very sweet words uh, of eagerness to unite with uh, Haridas Thakur. And Haridas Thakur said, yes, I will, but uh, let me just finish my rounds first. I've taken a vow, uh, so let me just finish them. And then uh, I will fulfill your desire. Of course, Haridas Thakur is completely controlled. He chanted all day, all night, and early morning appeared and uh, she knew nothing was gonna happen, so she left and went to Ramachandra Khan, told him, I'll have to try again tomorrow. So she tried again, and Haridas Thakur again, same thing. Sorry, I didn't fulfill my promise uh, yesterday, but uh, today I promise you, I've just got to finish my rounds and then I will be with you. Um, and you chant as well. And she would chant, Oh my Lord, Oh my Lord Hari, Oh my Lord Hari. Again, the night passed. <laughs> and Harida said, Look, I've got 10 million names of Krishna to chant this month. And I'm nearly done, nearly there. Uh, but I need to finish it first. So again, um, he was, of course, just trying to trick her um, and purify her at the same time, actually. Again, the second night, nothing happened. Uh, she reported to Ramachandra Khan. Then the third day she came and again she sat and she started chanting with Haridas Thakur. And um, Haridas continued chanting all night. And this association completely changed, transformed the mind of the prostitute. At the end of the night, she fell at his lotus feet, confessed Ramachandra Khan had sent her to him to pollute him. And she, he said, yeah, I know that, don't worry. I only, I, if, I only stayed for you uh, because I wanted to make you a devotee. I wanted to deliver you. Otherwise I would have gone a long time ago. <laughs> so uh, the prostitute, accepted Haridas Thakur as, as, as a spiritual master and he gave her much instructions. Go home, distribute your property to the Brahmins. Come here, stay in this cottage, I am going. And you just chant the Maha Mantra continuously, serve Tulsi by watering her and offering prayers to her. And in this way, you will achieve the shelter of Krishna very soon. He gave her uh, Diksha, Maha Maya Devi Dasi, and he left. He left that place and she became great Vaishnavi. And the uh, people around her uh, were very impressed by her change in her, uh, transformation in her mind, in her attitude. And she became great devotee. After that, Haridas Thakur uh, came to a place called Pulia, which is near Shantipur. Uh, and that's, uh, and in initially he stayed in a cave cave had a poisonous snake and the villagers were very scared. They told him about the snake and then one day he just spoke to the snake and he said, uh, my dear sir, in fact you are residing here then I am requesting you please leave by tomorrow otherwise I myself will definitely leave here. <laughs> Hearing those words from the Namacharya, the snake paid his obeisances and left. <laughs> Everybody was very impressed by that. So uh, the way the Charya lived in Shantipur and they would meet very often 
and talk about Krishna and pastimes. In the Prema Vilas, it says that Haridas Thakur actually took Diksha from Advaita Charya. And Haridas um, uh, actually exerted huge influence on the uh, Sankirtan movement of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He teamed up with Lord Chaitanya, they would go Nityananda. preaching. Sorry, Lord Nityananda, thank you. And they would go preaching. Uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would order Nityananda, go every town, every village, <laughs> every house. And that's what they used to do. And then later on, when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu took sannyas, Haridas was uh, with him in Jagannath Puri. And uh, they would meet every single day. In Navadvi, just going back a little bit, um, an incident happened. Um, Navadvip was full of smarter Brahmins who didn't really care for devotional service. They were more into ritualist activity. And the Bra one of the Brahmins came to Haridas Thakur who chant loudly. He said, hey, you're not supposed to chant loudly. It wakes up Lord Vishnu who becomes angry and he'll curse Navadvip with a famine. <laughs> but Haridas, he said, he actually counteracted this Brahmin's um, um, argument by quoting the Vedas, Bhagavatam, the Naradya Puran, and he conclusively proved, proved that loud chanting of Krishna's name is a hundred times more better than silent chanting. And I love this quote. Uh, anyone who chants your name purifies all who hears his chanting as well as his himself. Uh, Haridas concluded, which is better to feed yourself or to feed yourself and simultaneously feed a thousand others? So that's why uh, we chant loudly. This question was actually asked yesterday. Um, is is Kaushalya there? No. No, okay. <clears throat> anyway. It's a yeah, very nice point. Another incident happened where the uh, Muslim ruler arrested uh, Haridas. He was uh, feeling threatened because Haridas converted to Vaishnavism because he was born in a Muslim family. So he told him to chant the Quran. And actually, uh, Haridas Thakur uh, preached to, to the Qazi, all living entities in creation are inspired by the Lord in the heart to act in different ways. People of different religions praise the Lord's holy names and qualities according to the views of the scriptures, of their scriptures. The Lord accepts everyone's mood. If anyone shows malice towards another's religion, he actually shows malice to the Lord himself. Very important point. Who is worshipped by that religion? Since God is one, that person becomes envious of the same Lord that he himself is worshipping. Very nice point. So the Kazi the governor accepted it, but the Kazi didn't, the local ruler. And he said, no, you either give up your belief or you're going to die. I'll, kill you. Uh, you, I'll have you killed. And Haridas Thakur was very clear. If my body is hacked to pieces and even if I'm killed, still I will keep chanting the holy names. Hare Krishna. So the Kazi ordered uh, Haridas to be beaten in 22 marketplaces. <laughs> if he doesn't die after this, I know that the learned gentleman speaks the truth. <laughs> what a challenge. So then they took him to different marketplaces and um, Haridas was completely engrossed in the holy name, just like Prahlad Maharaj was harassed by Hirani Kashipu so much, yet Prahlad Maharaj was never disturbed. Similarly, Haridas Thakur just continued chanting and they were beating him in every marketplace and he wouldn't feel a thing. Eventually, uh, the people who were beating him said, look, Haridas, we can understand that you are a genuine saintly person. No one can do anything to you. But the Mulakpati won't understand any of this. Rather, he will have our heads. So please, die. <laughs> so hearing these uh, pleas, Haridas decided to uh, become unconscious externally and he went into deep meditation because he didn't want them to be punished. He was actually praying for them. So the, they brought the uh, body to the Mulakpati and uh, he presumed that he was dead. They threw him in the Ganga. And of course, uh, Haridas got out of the water and started chanting very loudly. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they all became very fearful. They all came to 
uh, offer their um, apologies to Haridas Thakur, as did the Kazi as well. And Haridas was very kind-hearted, he forgave. And then later on, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he explains to Haridas Thakur um, that these Muhammadans, they are beating you. And I was ready to destroy them with my Shudash and Chakra. But as you were praying for their welfare, I was unable to do anything. <laughs> So this is really incredible. Uh, Haridas Sakho is praying for the welfare of the Mohammedans so the Lord couldn't destroy them. Therefore, I accepted their blows on my own body. <laughs> then he showed him, just see the scars are still here on my body. This is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Seeing these marks, Haridas fainted in ecstatic love, regaining his consciousness. He began to praise the Lord of his life. Oh, Vishwambar. Master of the universe, please have mercy on this sinner who has fallen at your feet. I have no good qualities and I'm a vile wretch, rejected by all classes of men. How can I describe your divine character? So this was phenomenal. Then later on in Jagannath Puri, uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would come, come and visit uh, Haridas every day. On one occasion, he took a, a twig, uh, Datan, a tooth cleaner of Dog Jagannath, and he planted it next to Haridas while Haridas was doing his bhajan. And a huge tree grew immediately. And Haridas would do his bhajan under this tree. It's the Siddhabakul uh, tree. And it's present there at Haridas's bhajan kuti even today. I hope many devotees have been there and had darshan. We were very fortunate to be there six months ago, just before the lockdown. <laughs> oh, here it is. Very beautiful, very beautiful. And they've preserved it very nicely. And this is the uh, Haridas Thakur's Bhajan Kuti. There is a murti of Haridas Thakur in the same place, Siddha Bakul. Very, very nice. Uh, when Raghunath Das Goswami came to Jagannath Puri, um, Mahaprabhu instructed him to stay with Haridas. So they would uh, together chant uh, and talk about Krishna day and night. Haridas Thakur was very renounced, as was Haridas, as, um, as was Raghunath Das Goswami. And this is the point about uh, Namacharya. Mahaprabhu would ask uh, Haridas Thakur about the glories of the holy name. Haridas would meekly say, I'm not qualified, but Harid uh, Mahaprabhu would insist. And in this way, Haridas uh, Thakur would glorify the holy names. And this is recorded in a book called the Harinam Chintamani, uh, which uh, I think most devotees uh, will be aware of and probably will have, will have read as well. Um, when Haridas Thakur became uh, quite old, he was 35 years roughly older than Mahaprabhu, uh, he stopped eating. And Mahaprabhu came to him and said, uh, what's happened? Why are you not eating? And he said, well, uh, actually my body is fine, but my mind is not very well because I'm not able to chant my fixed number of rounds, 192 rounds. He was very old. <laughs> and he wouldn't eat because he hadn't done his rounds. So Mahaprabhu said to him, why don't you reduce the number of rounds, please? At that time, Haridas Thakur said to Mahaprabhu, I want to leave for the spiritual world in your presence. Please let me fix my vision upon your lotus face when I'm leaving. And the Lord was so kind, he allowed this to happen on this day, which is the Ananta Chatudasi at uh, Siddhabakul. Many devotees were present and the Lord, uh, in front of the Lord Haridas Thakur, left gazing at the lotus face of the, his most worshipable Lord. And um, then Chaitanya Mahaprabhu took the body of Haridas and he danced, he danced with the body. Mm -hmm. And uh, he went from door to door, he begged for alms, a big festival was arranged and there was a huge celebration for Haridas Thakur to go back. But then the Lord also lamented that we have lost a gem, this world has lost a gem. So we pray on this day to Haridas Thakur to bless us with some taste for chanting the holy names of the Lord. For Krishna's name is the only solace for the suffering condition living entities stuck in this material world. 
So this is very important. Uh, today is the day we ask Haridas Thakur, please bless us. And this is his samadhi. It's very near the ocean uh, or in Jagannath Puri. So thank you very much. Uh, that's the, uh, I wanted to just uh, share with the devotees this glorious personality.